So Michael, um, how did you first hear about Reviver? Who introduced you to it? John Thompson, uh, who's a longtime friend and, uh, and somebody we, we co-invest with. And he told us about you uh, before he sort of formally introduced us. But as, as it was going along, he said, I think you ought to really meet these guys. I think you'd like them and like what they're doing. And you know, then we met and we liked you and liked what you were doing. What made you decide to invest? The interest we have in investing in businesses run by, by uh, African-Americans or by women or, or more diversified. So, we, so that already got us interested because there aren't so many of those. Um, beyond that, um, we like technology businesses that are, let's say, first of all, we really like hardware. So this is hardware business, um, you know, as opposed to e-commerce or some of that sort of stuff. License plates have been around for 100 years or whatever it is. And, you know, here comes a new way to think about that. And that, that's the kind of stuff that intrigues us. Where do you see Reviver now? And then where do you see Reviver in the future? You know, where are we on that, on that spectrum? Well, right in the sweet spot. So I would like to say we could have foreseen this when we made our first investment, but that would not be telling the truth. And what I mean by that is... That, that, the way the, that the way technologies change, it's everywhere. And people use technology to do things that they never, we would have never thought. You'd be using your phone to turn on the lights and to lock your doors and open your doors and all this kind of stuff. But now it's perfectly obvious that this is the way things are going to work. So now the idea that you would use your phone to change your license plate makes perfect sense. That was not obvious 10 years ago when we, when we first started looking at the company. The, you know, going forward, this is the perfect time for the company. This is when the company can really blossom. When you look at founders and teams that you're looking to invest in, what are the types of personality traits that you believe are necessary in order for them to be successful long-term? Where it starts is optimism, optimistic. I mean, you know, people don't start companies unless they're optimistic and fearless. You know, a good understanding of technology is very important, particularly in the kinds of companies we invest in. Um, sense of humor is always, always good because there's generally a few times you have to have a sense of humor to get by. <laughs> you have, uh, you know, our plates on some of your vehicles. Um, what's the reaction that you get when you're out in public with it? And what's your thought process on, say, the platform or things that we could do to enhance it? I mean, the product looks cool. And people look at it. You know, license plates have been around for a long time, right? So here you have one, you know, with, a, with a, the electronic display, and, and people are curious about it. I will, I will say less curious than they used to be because there's more of them around. People see them. And, and, and the other thing I think less curious initially um, you know, people would like, how do, what is it? How does it work? Right. Now, because of some of the things we've talked about, about how, how ubiquitous this kind of technology is, people sort of expect things like this. When you look at disruptive technology, are there certain pillars that come to mind right away? Size of market, you know, you know what platforms are being used, but what are the things that really kind of get you, that make you think, okay, this could be something? Well, size of market is a big deal. I mean, um, you can have a very successful company in a small business or small-ish business. It can be a very good business, but it's not a good business from a venture investor standpoint. Venture investors take a lot of risks. They need big upsides. You know, you, to get to a big upside, you have to have a big market. So um, we look a lot at the competitive landscape. You know, who else is out there doing this stuff? You know, in this business, in Reviver's case, you know, there really, there really aren't competitors. I mean, there will be. But the regulated nature of the business makes it harder for people to go, oh, I like what they're doing. And I saw that on a car. I'm going to do it because it's such a long you know, road from a regulatory standpoint. So we look at you know, what stands out, what's unique about the product, how big is the market, how likely the competitors. Um, one of the things I talk about a lot when I'm talking to entrepreneurs is, is competitive response. One of, the, one of the big mistakes entrepreneurs make is they are always comparing the product they're about to have to somebody else's product on the market that was started years and years ago, and they're not looking at what's coming next. In a market like this one, where there's regulation involved, and there really is nobody else doing it, it, it it's then you look at it, so if we can make this work, then we have a lot of runway ahead of us, and this can be a really big business, and that's what it looks like it's going to be.